with this battle prayer. Father God, Lord, we know that your presence is here. We can feel it. Lord, I pray that the rest of the service will be what you want it to be. I pray that it won't be what Matt wants it to be, or what anybody else wants it to be, but you. I pray that, you will, that we will see the words for the very first time. Move me out of the way, Father. Come right on in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You got your Bible, Tammy. Starting with 15. Thank you, Lord. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot or cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy, to buy from you gold refined in the fire so you can become rich <clears throat> and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and, <clears throat> and silent put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I will come and sit down at my father's on, on his throne. He will he who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit has said to the churches. I want to read a story. Um, I took a late thinking course a couple seconds ago, and this is part of our to their, to your, from your heart to theirs. And uh, I read the story and it hit me like a ton of bricks because I said a lot of stuff that this, this man says in the story. It's called Christ Ain't Got a Church. So there was a man named Ben who drove a gray wagon from the depot to a business in town. He knew where everyone lived and how every, and little of how they lived. One day a man got off the train. It was a Sunday train, and not many people were, were steering, and stood looking up and down Front Street. The stores certainly were not open. But Ben had met the train, and the man asked him, can you tell me where to find a, a church of Christ? Ben removed his hat, sir. The church, the church of Christ. I'm looking for a church of Christ. Ben scratched his head and looked up and down the street. Then he pointed up Magnolia Street. Now there's a Methodist church. 
that's Mr. Harrison's church. And over yonder in the Baptist church, that's Mr. Denman's church. I'm not looking for a, no, I'm not looking for a church, uh, I'm looking for a, a Christ church. I can do that when I'm not reading. He says, no, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for a, a church of Christ. Being scratching his head a little bit more, taking his hat off, let's on his knees. He says, well, up there, up on the street is the Presbyterian church. That's Mr. Dumas' church. He said, no, I'm looking for a, a church of Christ. Christ church. He scratches his head a little Puts his hat back on, gets back on the wheel, clicks, looks back at the man and says, Sir, I read that the Christ has no church in this town. Now, I'm guilty of saying this is my church. I've run across people every day at work. What church do we go to? I can stand that, that phrase. What church do you go to? Yeah, I'm a Methodist. I'm proud to be a Methodist. But I'm even prouder to be a Christian. That's what we're called to be, isn't it? We are called to be Christians. Whether it's Methodist, Baptist, Lutheran, or Pentecostal. Or whatever you are. I, I heard many a times people know that I'm in the ministry. People did come and ask me questions and stuff. One of the most common questions that I was asked was, what's the, what's the difference between the denominations? And I think that Brother John that put this in in my head a long, long time ago. Go back to your math classes in high school or college. I won't go back to college because that's the most recent memory I have. There's a lot of math classes, there's a lot of classes going on there of different, of the same subject. And each, each Teacher, each professor is, is teaching it different, a little bit different. But you still know that one and one is two. You still know that two and two is four. And I, I tell people, if you go out of the doors, what, whatever denomination you are, and you know that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior, you know that He died on the cross, you know that He risen. Then you say from the God that there's no difference at all. A lot of people like to beg, beg differently. But I, I like to say this too. We're in the same brotherhood. If we know Jesus Christ is of the, the, the head of our household, within our, our church, within our business, or whatever we do, then we are in the same family. I, I entitled this the sermon, Can People See Jesus in Us? Now in Revelation 3, it talks about Jesus and his very much works from coming from a loving Savior. People have trouble with that. He says that I'd rather you be hot or cold. But since you are neither, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. New King James says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. That's pretty harsh words to come from Satan. <coughs> so how what are they saying about us in the church? As Red Bank and I met this church, 
as a Baptist church, as a Lutheran church, as a Pentecostal church. What are they saying about us? I read in some commentaries that being cold, cold or hot is not really a bad thing. Being cold means that you're, that you're soothing and that you're loving and that, that you are nurturing at a church. Matthew Henry's commentary says that. Being hot means that well, you're hot for Christ. And the two go, go together. Because if you're hot for Christ, if, you, if you're on fire, then you're going to be a nurturing church. The way I see it. Am I making sense? Next thing is what are they saying about their families? A lot of commentaries say that being in a family is like, that being in a Christian family, being in a Christian home, is like being in church. It's a worship experience where two or three are gathered. Christ is there. So if it's a loving, Christ-filled household, then Christ is there. And people see us as, as Christ in the world. That's the number number three. What are what is the world saying about us? Now, it's, now people heard this before, and I know, but it's it's easy to say I'm a Christian when I'm in this course. It's easy to sing Amazing Grace. It's a meet. It's a me it's so easy to sing victory in Jesus in these doors. But Matthew 28 says, Go therefore to the ends of the world and make disciples. Preaching the word that I have taught you. What are we doing with this? There's a lot of bickering in the church nowadays. I, I thought the church was going to split up with carpet color at one time. Stained glass windows. Whether or not the little placards was going to be on, on the keys or not. Which I kind of agree with that. I, I think once it's in the church, it should be in the church. It should be Christ. This is the possession of Christ. Does Christ have a church? When he comes down and says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Will he see Christ? That we have done, that we have gone to the ends of the world, that we have gone and made disciples. Now this church has done a great job of this, of making disciples and sending them out of the world. I'm one of them. I'm looking for an appointment right now. And I'm so on fire that I want to this I want to this this flow. How many Christians do that? I heard a sermon one time called Closet, Closet Christians. And there's nothing wrong with, with uh, I just lost it. I'm in the closet. I'm in the closet. I ain't finished that thought. <laughs> Thank you. But we do. We have to. We have to step forward out of the closet, so to speak, and let people know who Christ is. We have to let people know that yes, this is the Christ Church. It's a place where they need to be comforted. John found that out in his heart, and I 
did. My family did. When I lost my brother. And they lost their daughter. Many, many more have found comfort in the walls of this church. When I found out that God had cancer. We had a prayer vigil. I remember going, coming around that corner. And I, I thought maybe 15 people at the most. I walked down there was 270 people in this church or more. So yes, this is Christ Church. So when somebody comes to you that's outside, says, I'm looking for a Christ church, what are you going to tell them? <laughs> Ephesians. Ephesians 4, Paul talks about the two months. Do not go to bed with, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not give the devil a foot or he'll take it. And he'll take it long. The Bible is, is the instructions for daily living. It's a blueprint for being a Christian. People said, well, I don't know how to find this, but look at the Bible. Well, I, I'm hurt. Somebody has hurt me. Go find it in the Bible. It's right there. Well, somebody has, has cussed me out. Well, don't cuss them out. Just find the last in the Bible. I think there's doubt several times. We have to be ready as a church. We have to be ready as a household. We have to be ready as a workplace. Because there's people out there that's hurt. Are we hot? Are we cold? Are we lukewarm? Have you ever tasted lukewarm water? Jesus is referring to in Revelation scripture. We are, we are nasty when we are not being Christian. We are nasty. We are bad taste in his mouth. So he's going to spit us out. We head into the end of the season. Or we are in the end of the season. We are in the, in the depth of the end of the season. And one thing about man is we are preparing for passion. We are preparing as Christ prepares to hang up on the cross. We, we as, as a youth, youth group, is going to show the passion to the youth at, at, after the Good Friday service. We're going to have a QA and a uh, part in it. All this stuff. It's going to be very deep. And I, I've heard this several times in the movie. 
but it's too bloody, it's too bloody, it's too bloody, it's too bloody. No, it's not. If you really want to get in the crux of things, it's not bloody enough. Jesus' beard was pulled out. And those pretty little pictures that you see hanging around with him with the loincloth. That wasn't there. He was stripped naked. He hung up on the cross. He said the most amazing words. Father, forgive him. Forgive him not. That's the passion of Jesus Christ. And that's the story we need to send out there. This is the love of the church. And praise to God. That nobody here, and this is an urgent message. This is the last one. I'm going to leave it right here. This is an urgent message. If you are struggling with Christ, if you're struggling with your relationship in any way, shape, or form, don't leave out of course. Don't leave this place until you know that you have reconciled with Jesus Christ. But Jesus wants that relationship. He needs that relationship. And we need it. That's our story. Does Christ